Why is the Dominator the best? Well, first throw Pinion all out the window. Pinions are pretty worthless unless you're getting it from the best pilot in the world. So you want to stick to actual measurable characteristics. Things like speed. Well, the Dominator's fastest glider in the world, 51 miles an hour. Set the world speed record. So you got the fastest glider, but it's also one of the slowest, so you can launch the easiest, which is why you can see little kids launching the Dominator as well. So it makes it very, very easy to launch. Even though you have a, a higher top speed, you have a very wide speed range. Then you got glide ratio. Just look at videos, you know, Dominator versus or whatever, and you can watch side-by-side -side glide comparisons. If you climb up 1,500 feet with two gliders side-by-side -side and shut the engines off, one glider is going to sink faster than the other. And the technology is in developing that performance. So the glider sinks slower than the next glider. And the Dominator is one of the best gliders ever tested. The, uh, then you got handling. Now that one is a little more difficult to measure, but you can see me doing everything in the Dominator that I can do on uncertified class acro gliders. So, you know, the handling is at least fairly comparable to an acrobatics glider. So you have incredible handling. Then you got safety. And of course, the Dominator's safest swing we've ever tested. The, there's nothing else that you see doing the safety tests, both trims up and trims down and on every size, from extra, 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 extra small, all the way up to extra large, and they react almost exactly the same, no matter what the size is or whether it's accelerated or not. So that safety is absolutely critical. Then of course you got the stability, which is the collapse resistance. Uh, there are videos where you can see the Dominator flown side by side with other wings while the other wing collapses and the Dominator is being flown literally with no hands. Then there's another video where I'm flying it side by side with another wing and we go through some funky air and whap, the other glider takes a collapse, the Dominator doesn't. So from just years and years and years of experience, I know the Dominator is simply more stable. It's more collapse resistant, and if it does collapse, it pops out like instantly and going in the right direction. You can also see the real world, which are videos where people have actually gotten into some crazy air and you can see that stability and safety in real world scenarios. Uh, posted another video comparing the Dominator to the Mac Para. The Dominator accelerated, so it's in its least, uh, less stable configuration, takes a 95% collapse, and whap, it's back open in less than one second and the pilot only loses five to eight feet of altitude, where that same test on the Mac Para Muse, supposedly the same safety certification, but the glider reacts so violently, it takes a secondary collapse, and it takes a total of nine seconds before the glider finally recovers fully, losing over, you know, 100 foot of altitude. So just a huge huge difference even between other gliders that are supposedly in its same safety class then of course you can see uh, other glider comparisons like when I compared the Dominator to the Ozone Indy their certified glider well I yank a 50% asymmetric collapse and I add a little throttle and I try and maintain altitude. And I add a little more and I add a little more and I go full throttle and not even full throttle was I was able to prevent myself from dropping like a rock. So during in that collapse, maybe it didn't turn so it passed, it passed that type of safety certification, but they didn't tell you how fast you were falling in that collapse. And it fell so fast, not even full throttle from a flat top ninja could keep it 
in flight. That is a major, major safety issue that people don't warn you about. With the Dominator, even on an extra, extra small, you can yank that major asymmetric collapse and just a little bit of throttle and you continue to fly straight and level. So you're not falling out of the sky. So not only does the Dominator recover perfectly uh, and it exceeds those certifications, but it does it without losing that huge amount of altitude. Then there's another one still where I take a brand new certified beginner class glider and you can watch me start an oscillation. Then I sit perfectly flat and let the glider try to recover. Well, the glider didn't recover. It got worse and worse and worse until it was literally looping me face first towards the ground. And keep in mind, that's another beginner class certified glider. And that was on like a 24 square meter. With the Dominator extra, extra small, I did the same test and bam, the Dominator quickly returns to straight and level flight. So it looks like this. You just start an oscillation, then I put the brakes back. Now I do absolutely nothing. And it oscillates once, and there's twice, and bingo, I'm back to straight and level flight. So that's the Dominator, and I'm on an extra, extra small. So is it safer than other wings? Life and death critical. If you sold a glider that oscillates and does not fix that oscillation to any new pilot, oscillation is not intuitive to fix. So here, I'll ask you, the viewers, what do I do if my glider is off to the right? It's off to the right, what do I do? Pull left brake, pull it back above you, right? Wrong, glider goes off to the left, people pull right brake to pull it back above them. That's actually backwards to what you do to stop an oscillation. To stop an oscillation, you do nothing. So glider goes to the right, I just do nothing, then I wait till it swings above me and I hit right brake, not left brake. So stopping oscillations are backwards to what's intuitive. And if you don't have the skills to do it and you got that wrong glider, you just died, dead. And that's why Ashton Bruner of Green Eagle Trikes got that one guy killed not too long ago. Chucked him up on a Mac paraglider that oscillates violently and with a $29 piece of crap radio he was supposed to use for communications, the guy quickly lost control and died. It is not cool, not acceptable when simply flying a quality glider like the Dominator can save people's lives. So it's not about the opinion. You gotta throw opinions out and all the bull crap people talk. It's all about comparing actual facts and actual characteristics, measurable characteristics, where you can equally compare one to the other without any opinion getting in the way. So that's why my son here, 13 years old, is flying a Dominator because I know it is the safest glider ever made and has the performance to make it fun. So it's, you don't get sick of it and want to get a new glider. We have a total blast and keep on flying. So if the best pilot in the world flies the Dominator for the fun factor, you can imagine it is a pretty fun glider to fly. You can literally flip it upside down. Yo! So yeah, effortless, handling, perfect, absolutely beautiful. But you always also have the safety to go with it. So there we go. Superdale out, going flying with my son. So we launched in a rotor. <laughs> That's the Dominator. And with that, I mean, it's not even a hesitation. It's total no problem. Now, if you didn't have super skills or a Dominator, that could be a deadly thing. Just absolutely don't even think about launching in a rotor. But if you have absolutely incredible skills from super training and you're flying a Dominator, then flying through a rotor is pretty much a non-issue. 
So let's fly right through the rotor behind these trees here. There's the wind, you can see it's coming my way, and boom, right through the rotor, into the rotor, bam, trashed around. Let's get wild, woohoo! And not even phasing, <laughs> it's like a total non-issue, Dominator doesn't even care. And of course, here comes my son. And boo yeah, flies right through it, total non-issue. Fun stuff. So, if I was worried, <laughs> obviously I would not be flying into a rotor. It just doesn't go that way. But, when you got the safest glider in the world and boatloads of experience flying and testing that wing, you just learn, you just know how dang safe that glider actually is. So let's come up in the rotor of the trees and now hit full throttle and climb. Look at that, rocket ship. Booyah, rocket man. Right through the trees. So it's just, with the Dominator, it allows you to fly pretty much whenever the heck you want. You won't see anyone else flying tonight who doesn't have a Dominator. Woohoo! If they don't have a Dominator, a flat top and super skills, you can see there is nobody else out here flying because there's a lot of wind and it's blowing from the north, which is kind of a really funky direction because it's coming over those mountains right in front of us. But if you got a Dominator and super skills and a flat top, who gives a crap? We don't care. We just go fly whenever the heck we feel like flying. And they can talk all the crap they want, but they're not flying. They're just talking crap. Here we go. Rotor, climbing, and woo Over the trees. Yeah. Okay, that's fun. I don't care who you are. <laughs> That's just a blast. Tree jumping there, jumping over trees. I mean, you see how fast that thing climbs? That's flat top ninja power. Here we go, let's climb this tree and we are ready. Boom. Let's go, am I gonna make it? Am I gonna make it? Of course, duh, wouldn't even have started if I wasn't gonna make it. Did you see that climb rate? Ninja, dominator. So part of it's the ninja being so powerful and part of it's the dominator having so much incredible efficiency. And you have that flare authority where I can use quite a bit of brakes and make my climb even faster and not be worried about stalling the glider. <sighs> dominator, baby. Here we go, stuff some brakes and hands up, drop like a rock. Woohoo! <laughs> that is just fun! And let's do it. Hey Troy, let's trims up and speed up a bit. Go ahead and go trims up, stay on it. Here we go, let's do some rotor flying here. Right in the rotor, notice I'm getting slammed around. Boom, woo, little jiggly wiggly is the Dominator. So let's watch Troy, watch him get slammed around. He just keeps the glider pressurized, keeps it above him, and bingo, no problemo. Dominator, baby. It's not just me, it's my boy. We know what to fly. And of course, he can pick any glider he wants in, <laughs> in the stash. We have like over 50 gliders to play with of all different makes and models and manufacturers. We can choose anything. We're not forced to fly Dominators. We can fly whatever the freak glider we want. Does not matter to us. 
It's just the Dominator's the best, and so that's what we fly. And if we want to jump trees going through the rotor, well, you fly a Dominator. If you want to crash in a rotor and die, well then, fly some death trap they call reflex, which isn't reflex. There's no such thing as a reflex paraglider. That's just a scam to kill stupid people. Okay. Yeah, rotor flying 101. Just relax the arms, feel the brakes, maintain that nice pressure, keep that glider above you. If the glider tries to shoot forward, bam, you hit the brakes. If it falls behind you, hands up. This is the way it goes. Oh yeah. Dominator, baby. We don't care about no turbulence. And neither does a 13-year-old little kid. <laughs> so all those big sissies whining about how they can only fly early morning and only if it's perfectly smooth, which doesn't exist, they're just a bunch of whiners who don't know how to fly and don't know anything about the sport and don't have the right gear. Get the right gear and training, you can fly whenever the heck you want to fly. Oorah, even if you're a little kid. Super skills. Okay, we're coming in behind the rotor of those trees. Okay, rotor landing 101. So you see those huge trees right in front of us. That is where the wind is coming from. So I bring it down to the ground. I set up my foot drag. I burn it to a stop. And boo yeah. And I run it up into the rotor. And that is how you land in a rotor. But he would never do that unless you have extremely good skills. So if you can't do circle foot drags or foot drags in a circle, you do not have the ability to maintain that perfect altitude while getting slammed around. So I would not recommend rotor landing 101. Got to have super training for that because there's a very specific skill set that you learn at super training. You just don't learn anywhere else at all, period. Get out of your seat. Get ready for that foot drag. Little to the left. There you go. And ease off. Ease off. Ease off. Ease off. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. There. Nice. Briggs. Beautiful job. Super Troy. Rotor landing 101. Now that was a perfect landing. It don't get no perfecter than that. Or er, more perfect. Or perfecter. There you go. Super Troy. Now that was freaking beautiful. Foot drag it into a landing in a rotor. That's awesome. That's some super skills right there. Nice job, Super Troy. Hey! Rotor flying. Give me five. Yeah. We don't care about no stinking rotor. We got super skills and dominators and flat tops. Hoorah. Boy, see right there, Super Troy. 